In this tutorial, I'll quickly show you how to create the fade in and fade out effect in Blender. If you look at your screen, if I press spacebar to play, oh, here we go, fades in, keep on playing, it fades out. And the way that I did that is I made use of a mix shader and I used a transparent BSDF as well as a glossy BSDF. And I'm using the Cycles render engine because when you don't use Cycles, transparency doesn't work so well as you will see in a second. Let's go back to frame one, press play. It just doesn't react well. Anyways, uh, hopefully you find that useful. I'm gonna t take you every step of the way now as I play around in Blender going over this specific feature. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Making an object fade in Blender is easy. Select your default cube, press X delete, add the mesh that you want to fade. I'm gonna use Suzanne the monkey head and I'm gonna shade it smooth and add a subdivision surface modifier to her to make her look perfect. I'm gonna press numpad one to be in front orthographic view and she is looking fine. I'm gonna to switch to render view. Currently I am in EV and I'm gonna press shift A mesh and use a plane. I'm gonna press S20 and G lock it to the Z axis minus one to bring it down like that. And I'm also gonna add an HDRI image to the environmental texture. You can go to HDRI Haven Dot com or whatever to get a free HDI image or whatever it is and I am going to use uh, just the moon actually it's moving an HDI which is just a normal standard image and then I'm going to select this plane and I'm going to give it a material the material that I'm going to give it is going to be a glossy material and I'm going to give it a strength of 0 0.15 and I am going to leave it on white just make it pure white there we go that should look pretty good and in my render settings because i'm using ev so i can see how it'll actually look i'm turning on screen space reflection ambient occlusion and i might as well turn on bloom in the meantime great i'm quite happy with that the next thing i want to do is select suzanne and there's many ways to create the fade effect yes the cheap and nasty way the cheap and nasty way is to go to your material settings add a new material and all you have to do Make sure you're on keyframe one. Let's say you want her to be visible at keyframe one. You can, let's just change the color so you can see it. Let's say you want Suzanne to be green. And we'll just go to the alphas and we'll hover over this and press I. And let's say at frame 50, you want her to be invisible. So you'll change this to zero and you'll press I. And just like that, she fades away. Now, if you change to your render view mode to cycles, and it might take a little while to load, you'll be able to see this in action. So this is the quick, fast, cheap, and nasty way that I do not recommend, but you should be, you should know. If I press space by now, pause here, you can see she's slowly but surely fading away. More and more and more. Yep, I do have a potato PC. Thanks for asking. And you get the idea, she's almost 100% gone, out of frame 50, gone, out of the scene. Right, so I don't recommend that way. So the first thing I would do is right click here, delete those keyframes. Go to the very first keyframe. Go to your material settings. And I'll change it from principal BSDF, just personal preference. I like playing with glossy materials. And I'm going to change the strength to 0 0.15 to make it nice and shiny. And... For the time being, let's just change this to Eevee so we can it runs a lot a little bit smoother. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. And now if we want this to disappear, all we need to do is pull this up, this timeline up, then over here, we're gonna pull this timeline down so we still can see our timeline, but we're gonna make this main area here our shader editor. Currently this material is just called material two, we're gonna rename it and call it silver. So we know what it is, and yeah, it says silver. So we in the correct material. If you weren't, you'd drop down here and you'd select silver. Right, so currently this is the exact setup. So we're gonna select this, pull this out like that, press shift A, and we're gonna use another shader, a shader called your mix shader. You can connect that into here, press uh, shift A again, use another shader. This time we're gonna use a transparent shader, and we can connect it into here. And if we make this 100%, well, we make this zero, it's 100% glossy. And it looks marvelous. It looks great. But if we make this 100%, I'll put this on one, it's completely transparent. 
And of course, you can keyframe this. You can press I, change to frame 50, and then make this one, and press I. And the benefit of this way is that you get to use any material uh, type, in, not just the principal BSDF. You could use any material type and, and do this. So let's go to frame one. And let's change to cycles quickly. Give it a few seconds to load. And we're going to take this a step further in a second. So please bear with me. We're going to press play. Stop over here at frame 24. See if it's starting to look invisible. It is. Let's hit a play, stop at 40. It looks like it's almost gone. 46, it's not even there. And now it's completely gone after frame 50. Can't even see it in our scene. Right, so as nice as that was, I'm not a fan. So let, let's take this to the next level. Let's, uh, let's start a new scene and let me show you something interesting here. So we're going to delete the default cube. We're going to press Shift A. We're going to use Suzanne again. Right click Shade Smooth as before. Use a subdivision surface sub and change it to 2. Make her look crystal smooth. And press numpad 1 to be in front orthographic view. Shift A. We're going to use Mesh. A plane. S20. GZ minus 1. And then we also use an environmental texture. In this case, I'm just going to use the moon again. Why not? There we go. Downloads, I guess. Here we go. And change to our render view mode. Currently, it's obviously in Eevee by default. Select uh, this ground texture. Add a material quickly. Let's make sure it's glossy so we can see the reflection. Let's make this 0 0.1 and leave it on point. All right, so I'm quite happy with that. The next thing you want to do is select Suzanne. And we're going to give Suzanne a material. And I'm going to give Suzanne a glossy gold material. 0 0.1. And we have to go to our render settings to make sure it's set up correctly. And occlusion bloom and screen space reflection. And now we can press tab, go into edit mode, press three to choose face select and select all these faces of the eye, hold and shift and select all these faces of the eye at the same time. With the eye selected, we're gonna click on material settings. So we're gonna add a new material and we're gonna click new, rename this eyes and we're gonna change this to emission. And we're gonna change this to an interesting, I don't know, let's click a sign change the strength to at least 30 and choose a color that you like doesn't really matter I'm going to use this color press tab go into object mode and now we want these eyes to go on and off that's step number one so let's do that so we do the follow the exact same process we go to our shader editor we go over here, we press Shift A, go to our shaders, use a mix shader, connect it, Shift A, use another shader known as a transparent shader, and we connect it this way. And we start this off on, perhaps we start this off on one, or perhaps you want to inverse this so that zero is off and one is on. So we start this off being off and we press I, and then we pull this down over here, change this to our timeline. Perhaps we want to bring this down just a little bit so we can see. Change it to frame 50. Limit this to 60 frames just for this experiment. And then we turn it on and press I at 50. The next thing we want to do is pull this open like this. You can press end hide that. Make sure you've got the mix shader selected. And we're going to switch to our graph editor. So currently when we play this on frame one,
it's it's off and then it's on but let's quickly go back to keyframe one it turns on a little bit too quick but it gets more and more powerful because it's on 30. so we're going to play with that a little bit in a second so one thing we could do to have it delayed perhaps we going to move this to 10 or something like that we press play so it takes a while before it turns on but let's say we want this to flicker all you need to do to make this flicker make sure you select your mix shade over here this must be selected and once this is selected you can change from your shader editor to your graph editor and now we've got this interesting graph if you press n this menu will pop up and you can go to your modify properties and you can add a modifier we're going to use noise and you can give this some crazy strength if you like but if it's not working first uh make sure you're selecting the the correct graph which is this let's give this uh let's make everything one quickly and then we'll mess with this and i'll expand this so you can see what everything says yeah so we've got the scale and the strength so currently this is the just the normal scale so if we lift this up we should see a difference in scale, which we're not doing. Oh, there we go, now it's working. For whatever reason, I turned something on that I shouldn't have. Let's put this back on one. Lift this up, we can get it, there we go. Anything below the blue line is transparent. On or below the blue line is transparent. Above the blue line is emission and emission intensity. So let's make this a whopping 10, which is just madness. And you can also mess with the scale. So for example, if you want it to be closer to, together, you might want to go 0 0.1. Or if you want it further apart, you might go 10. But knowing you, you probably want something like 1.25, maybe. And uh, you also want to change your render settings to cycles. Give it a second to load. It will take a little while. EV struggles to deal with transparency, so it gets a bit wonky sometimes. But now if we press play, you can see it, it turns on and off, which is perfect. Currently, our, our animation is only 60 frames. And that's it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Hopefully, you know how to create the fade in and fade out effect now. and I'm going to add the ambient to bloom that I did in my previous tutorial, how to create bloom in cycles to this to make it really pop. But uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe.